Alrighty guys, uh, your skeptical gunsmith here at Four Peaks Tactical. This is part two of the Smith & Wesson FPC uh, trigger tune. Today we're going to be working with the hammer block here and that hammer spring. Um, and if that looks familiar, it, it kind of should. That hammer spring is very, very similar to an AR-15 hammer spring. That's actually how we're going to reduce uh, the trigger pull in the Smith & Wesson FPC uh, nine millimeter PCC. We're going to use this Caw Valley reduced power spring kit for the AR-15 uh, trigger and we're going to use that hammer spring. We're going to have to cut it down a little bit but it's going to fit perfectly uh, in this little block and we're going to get a, a reduced uh, trigger pull. A couple things to note here, a um, couple small parts. You can take this little lever out right here. It's captured by a spring. Whoop! There's the lever. Put that aside. There's a spring that just came out. And uh, then we're going to release the tension on the hammer. And we're going to do that by that little lever right there, which is basically um, as your transfer bar from your trigger comes back, it's going to hit that little lever right there on the bottom. Uh, and so all we have to do is push down on the hammer a little bit, push down on the hammer a little bit, move that forward or back rather with your fingernail. And voila, your hammer is released and we have access to um, the hammer, the hammer spring. Here's your sear engagement. We, you can, you can spend a little time on that and making sure that's nice and sharp. Um, that's a next step. I like making things smooth and sharp. There's another little spring over here uh, that is caught and captured. We'll want to make sure we understand exactly how that's positioned. Uh, but now we'll go ahead and drift out some of these parts, the pin. They come out fairly easily. There you go. And that is it. Now we have the hammer spring. We're gonna have to get this off of here, just you know, keeping good note as to how it's installed. Easiest way to do it is really just to pull it off one side. Just use a little force. There we go. It's coming off. And voila, there's your hammer and your hammer spring. That's how they went together. Now we just need to mirror this with our new part, which is right here. Open this up. All we're really going to use uh, is the hammer spring. So we'll take out the trigger spring that we're not going to use right now and the disconnector spring which we're also not going to use right now and just focus on these two parts and look at how m almost mirror image they are of each other the one simply has shorter legs than the other um, so we're just going to take this one make it look like that one by clipping off the legs so we'll do that right now Just want to make them the same size, meaning the legs. So we're just going to grab wire cutter here, cut them to about the same length. Doesn't quite have to be perfect, but you want them to be very, very close. Watch where the pieces go. They will fly a little bit. Make sure you're wearing some safety glasses. There you go. Now we have our new trigger spring. We'll put that aside. That's the old one. You'll note this one has basically five. Whoop. You'll note this one has basically five coils. This one has four. Kind of depends on where you call it. If you look at it from this side, there's uh, about five wide, and here we have about four wide, and that's where we're going to get the reduced tension.
Look at that. Just like it was meant to be. So now we can kind of start putting everything back together again. Uh, there's a couple things I like to do. Um, clearly, I'm a big fan of keeping things well lubricated. I like a little bit of grease. Uh, oil is good. Don't need a lot. Just make sure you grease some of these surfaces so that they rotate freely. Got some goo on there. I like, you know, a grease for stuff like this because it's just a little heavier and it's going to stay put longer than a thinner oil. Just a little bit. All right. You got that. Now we can set that back in our little chassis here. Pretty straightforward. Take our pin. Again, if you wanted to spend a little time, we could remove that and you could make sure the underside of that sear is sharp. Um, they generally are out of the factory. I don't like messing with those much, depending on the gun. If it's your own personal gun, you can tune that a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, altering the sear is a, a pretty significant uh, adjustment and you want to be careful when you're doing that. There we go. So now it's back in. I'm going to push it. We're still engaged. Still works just like the original does, but we've got a little lighter trigger, a hammer spring. Now that we've got that where we want it, um, one thing I really like to do uh, is, is polish a few parts, especially where they meet the, the frame. This is metal frames plastic. So I usually take um, something just to clean it up and smooth it out. I like using a Dremel just to make sure these surfaces are nice and shiny and smooth. So that they ride along the inside of the frame smoothly. Once I'm certain I've got no burrs or anything there, I'll actually take a little bit of a polishing pad. Polish it out so it's a little shinier. And then I'll lubricate it as well. I do this just because I like things to work smoothly. I don't like anything to hang up anywhere. Shinier it is, the smoother it is, the better off you're going to be. Do you have to do this? No. Is it going to help a little bit? I'd like to think so. shiny, nice and smooth. I think I'll pause it right here and create a third video for the reassembly.